How's it going, YouTube? Back with another Kershaw today. Sorry, this is two in one week, but about two in a row. <laughs> so the last one for a minute. This is the Culpepper 40, 4383 RB. RB is a red bone. So a special edition of the Culpepper, which has been out for a while. Normally comes in 7CR and a black and silver. But this one looks a lot better. Got the red bone, nickel, and then brass on the inside. Kind of looks like an Iron Man colors. Total fingerprint magnet though. Not normally into the traditional knives, but this one was priced right. Figured why not? These uh, retail for $44. But they're, they're, I found them on sale a couple places for 25 And I thought that was a great deal, so I picked it up. If I don't like it, it'll be a Christmas present. So, got a 3.25 inch clip point blade of D2. Yeah, D2 for $25 with all these good materials. Happy with that. Usually not a big fan of D2, but don't see it on a lot of slip joints especially traditional slip slip joints you can spend way more on a case or a GEC and they got uh, garbage still pretty much all right as you see there's a it says satin on the website I'm calling this like a mirror satin there is some lines in it but it's mostly mirror and um yeah flat grind it's your model number blade stock is 2.8 millimeters or 0.11 inches got an overall length of 7.4 inches so it's a it's big for a slip joint actually in fact it's my biggest slip joint oh hit the camera check it out against a couple slip joints these are more modern but still slip joints it's the QSP Hedgehog probably my favorite slip joint and then the Tucson TS90 I believe don't quote me on that yep the Tucson was my biggest until now Definitely bigger than both of those. Kershaw Dividend. It's bigger than that. And just a hair smaller than the CJRB Echo. Got a 4.12 inch handle, 0.46 inches wide, and the closed width in the pockets 1.04. Weighs 3.1 ounces, and there's no screws on this. It's a pin construction, so if you like taking your knives apart, your SOL. I'd say this isn't really like a user knife. I mean, you can use it, but it's more of a collector knife, I guess you could say. It's not, it's not the best for EDC. Of course, there's no pocket clip because it's traditional. And um, yeah, it's got the red bone. I thought this was brass at first, but this and this is nickel. And then you can see the the brass is a liner. Of the, yeah, looks very good. Glad they did that. I'm not really sure what red bone is. Maybe someone that's into traditionals can tell me. Is it actually bone? Because it kind of looks like wood. Hmm. 
Uh, got one opening method. It's the nail neck. No half stop, unfortunately. Do have a lanyard hole. Got the little shield. This is Kershaw. A lot of slip joints have that. Couple small imp imperfections in the red bone, so it might really be bone. Let's go over my dislikes. Um, it's really a great knife, but wouldn't be me if I didn't complain about something. The sharpening shoal is pretty atrocious. They should have ended the edge quite a bit farther forward. Can you see that? Yeah. There's no half stop. I like to see a half stop. And the spring is a little bit weaker than I like. Might be my weakest one so far, but I only got like five, five or six slip joints. And my last one is, handles pretty slick. You can tell they polished this. And uh, yeah, the red bone's slick, the nickel's slick, everything's slick, even the blade's slick. That's why I say it's not the best for EDC. I mean, you can carry it and use it from time to time, but I would not do anything too hardcore with it. So yeah, don't really have an affiliate link for this knife, but I will link it down below where I bought it so you can get the deal. Um, yeah subscribe if you haven't already check out my instagram it's linked down below and give me a like or comment see you in the next one